Hello, welcome back. Welcome, uh, welcome back to Nigel's Modeling Bench. Um, here we have part two now of the uh, of the Hatchet Lancaster revisited. And before we go any further, if you should want to join in and build one of these, either straight out of the packet, as you'll see me doing on previous videos, or doing the modifications as I'm doing here, then uh, you can get yourself one by having a look over here. You can scan the QR code there on the right, or you can go to the website across the bottom. So um, there we go. Right, let's get on with this build. And as you can see, we've got lots of work done. So we've done the painting. Okay, so we've got the green and the silver paint on there. We've done the brown on the base of the seat. We've hand painted the green in for the seat frame. Uh, we've got our interior in the nice interior green. And we've got our frames all painted in the green as well. So we got rid of all that blackness. We've got the interior of the um, of the actual turret there in green. So that's going to go on the back of there. And that's all going to be nice and bright. And then we've got the... Remember we had all these ejector pin marks in here. This is the actual shell that goes around the outside of that. We've got those sanded out. I've sprayed that in um, LP65 NATO Black, which very, very closely matches the uh, hatchet colour. And then this, which is on the inside, is obviously painted interior green. And we've got the inside of this nose section. I masked off the area around here. I masked off the area around the sides so we didn't see any green sticking out of the front. Um, I've used Micromask. This is something new to me. Uh, it's been around for years. Um, but Micromask is a, um, a form of liquid mask and basically you can see here that what we've done, we've, we've basically painted it on or applied it with a cocktail stick and now we can come in and peel it off. And uh, the reason I've used it here is because I didn't want green paint showing from the edge of the turret this is obviously going to glue onto the back of the glazing so there we go we got the edge now so we can just basically peel that off there we go we got our liquid mask there's lots and lots of different liquid masks you can get um, there's this one which is micro mask you've got the mr hobby ones which i'm not i used to love them i'm not a big fan of them anymore to be honest um one of the best ones on the market is this one this is the vms liquid mask this stuff is absolutely amazing. Uh, I only use this on here because I want to try it out. Um, I got it from Hannans. I just wanted to try it out. I think it's actually um, a blue PVA release agent for fiberglass molding. I think that's exactly what it is. So uh, there we go. But you see how easy it comes off. And now we've got a nice black edge so that when we uh, put the, the turret together like that, we won't have any green paint showing. So uh, that was what I wanted to do. So, um, as you can see, this is uh, this is my mix of the uh, interior green, and this here is LP72, which is Tamiya Mica Silver, and you can see it all looks very, very bright and lovely. And when we put the the glazing on, you can see now the difference in having it all black inside. You can see we've got this lovely silver and green interior. Um, on the guns, these parts here are actually part of the pivoting mechanism so I've painted those silver but on the back the breech was actually inside they were like a hollow shell almost like a, a saucepan around the outside so what I've done is painted them so that the, the black breech is still showing inside I've also sprayed around the back of the breeches black to cover up the uh, the bright metal um, tangs there from the electrical connections so we're kind of almost to the point now where we can start putting it all together um, I haven't actually done any paint paintwork on these. These are the ammo shoots that go up the sides. That's something I'm going to have to do before we uh, finish putting it all together. But what I want to do for now is get these in. Now, when you put these in, this these two little lumps at the bottom here on the guns, you can see there's two little raised areas. They go down. So that is obviously the left gun. So I'm going to try putting that in there this way around. We'll see what happens. So that goes in there. It'll be a lot easier to put them in from the front, but of course I've got the wiring all taped together. And being a lazy swine that I am, I don't want to uh, disconnect it. So that's going to pop through there. So that goes through there, lovely. And then 
that's going to pop into there like so we've got it caught on something at the bottom so there we go that's going to pop into there so you can see we give that a little squeeze with our tweezers and then we get one of these little plastic pegs here that are going to go in and this is going to be a nightmare because they are a very tight fit I was tempted to kind of drill them out but there's a fiber optic in there and I really don't want to damage that fiber optic so what I'm going to do now is put my finger behind there nice and solid and then I'm going to push that pin as hard as I can using the back of the tweezers oh blimey I think what I'm tempted to do is get a pair of pliers with some here and actually squeeze it together and there we go we've got a bit of friction on the gun there just want to squeeze that together because that pin is such a tight fit in there okay so we've got a bit of friction there now which is good so that we can actually position the guns and then this one is going to go in the other side just like so push it up through so basically here what we're doing guys I've shown you a an alternative assembly process for the front turret rather than following the hatchet instructions you can do it this way and that way you can get it all painted up and everything if you want to if you don't want to that's absolutely fine you're still going to end up with a lovely lovely model so we've got that gun in place there so I'm going to grab this pin with my tweezers. Oops. Come here. Come here. There we go. So I'm going to grab that there, put it in, and then give it a squeeze. It should start to go together. And then what we can do is come in with our pliers. Make sure our pliers are only on the gun and nothing else. And then squeeze it together. As you can see there, our gun is free to move. I'm just going to give it another little squeeze. So there we are. We've got our guns done. So that's all good. Right. And then next is these bits are going to go on. But I want to paint these because I've actually there's sprue nibs on the ends of them. And I want to paint them black because they're supposed to be a lovely black color. But you can see here that when we actually get this together, Get the guns through the slots that's going to sit in there like that and you can see that now we have this lovely pre-44 green and silver turret interior which is so so beautiful we also have this little knob here which is as i say i believe is a lock um let's get this bag open I believe this is a lock that actually locks the turret in the forward position for sort of normal just flight when they're getting to the uh, to the bomb zone or whatever. So what we're going to do, we're going to grab some of our super glue, and I, here I am, Mr. Unprepared. Uh, we've got our little box here. We get that clear part out of the way. We'll just grab some super glue, some of the black VMS thin, which I like to use. And then we can grab this part here, this pin, get some on there, and then we can put that into that hole, just like so. And that will sit there, and the super glue can cure. I want to make sure it's vertical. And there we are. So what I've got to do now is go away and get some... Um, some painting done and paint these frames around these rounds. The rounds are already painted in a nice bronze colour. I may actually brighten them up with a bit more bronze. But uh, you can see on the ends where I've sanded away the sprue nibs. You can see there that there's some grey plastic showing. So I want to get rid of that. But uh, basically we're looking really, really good. We've got the ammo bins here. And they are going to fit 
into those holes in the base like so you can see these are just a push fit they're fitting lovely so when we super glue them they'll be great again the same here just get that in just like so there we go so we'll get those in just like that so they're going to be in there and we'll see those through the nose blister and uh, we can um, move our guns and get them to whatever position we want them at the moment they're restricted by the wires because I've got them all taped together but uh, basically there we go if you are choosing to buy figures to put in here please be aware that you are going to be very restricted because of these wires and everything you're going to be very restricted by the um by them so you 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 know you need to make sure that you're you know able to cut the cut the figure about i'm just wondering why that gun will not pivot down any more than that i can see why it's stuck on the internal parts of the of the terex give that a good squeeze there we go so you can see the guns are catching on this you can see that I've painted that control panel in there which is the control panel for the gunner so um there we go we can get the guns nice and power and just you could glue them in place if you want so you don't need the guns to be uh, pivoting do you but um when we put these on you can see here is this the right side i think it is the right side you can see that when we put these no that isn't the right side when we put these on the um the uh the that is the wrong side this should be on this side you can see that when you put these on the ammo belts will actually cover that plastic pin on the end there you can see okay so we'll get those painted black and then we'll see uh, how they look and get them fitted but uh, all in all it's coming together very very nicely and uh, really happy with that I'm going to move that wire over because that wire there is getting jammed on that seat so I'm going to move those over as well there we go so now we can pivot our guns nicely main thing is to keep them you don't want them like that because they would never be like that in real life you want them to be parallel with each other okay so there we go modification one successful all right so i've got these painted black and they can dry now i've used uh viejo uh black paint for those um so what we need to do now is get these ammo bins glued in so what i'm going to do is just put a drop of the black super glue in here and that should be enough to hold them in because they're a very tight fit they could they could actually probably go in with no glue at all to be honest but uh they can go in like that there we go and then same on the other side put some super glue in there in the middle and then that can go in like so and i'm hoping guys the one thing you've learned if you've if you if you're watching me to learn if you're watching me for entertainment then then fine but if you're watching me to learn hopefully the the one thing you will have learned from this is about this dry fitting malarkey um getting everything to fit before you start committing to paint is a really important stage of any modeling of any you know sprues die cast part works whatever you know if you start just throwing things together then you're going to come unstuck as you can see when I mean, we've got those side pieces glued in there there's no marks or anything where the where the joins are there's a there's a, a bit of a step in there which i'm not over the moon about but uh there we go we can close it up there we are and there we go there's our ammo bins in they're not quite dead vertical but hey ho that will do 
So there we are. So that's our interior turret completed with all our detail painting and everything done inside. So uh, moving forward, um, obviously I've got to fit those pieces and let them dry first. You will notice that on the insides here I've painted this green and you will see that I've masked off the inside of the windows and I've painted a lot of the clear part with, um, with green paint. How I did that, I'll show you now. So I'm going to make a mask for the other side. Okay, so this mask will be for the opposite side and then we'll use that mask, that side, to make a mask for this side. So what I'm doing is just putting this piece of masking tape on here, grab a, a cocktail stick and just go round and inscribe into that masking tape where that window frame is. You can see that on there now, yeah? And then we can take that off. We can grab a pair of scissors, long drawer, scissors, okay, and we can basically cut this and sort of stay a couple of millimetres away from the, the line that we've marked. Just like so. Okay, so now we have a mask for that. And then what we'll do is just knit the corners off. Just to make it look a bit more sexy. There we are. And then we can come along and use this mask. It was this side, wasn't it? We can use that mask then and put that in there. Okay, and we can look. If you get a light behind, you'll see the light coming through. And you can basically line up the window frame. And there you are, there's your mask. And then you can paint it. So that's how I've done that. So in case you're wondering, that's how it's done. The circle, you can see here on the base of this turret, we have a, an aluminium coloured circle in the green. What I did there, I sprayed the green first. And then I took a little cutting mat. Okay, I got a piece of um, 40 millimeter wide masking tape. I haven't prepared for this at all. I'm sorry, I should have prepared so that I had this here on the bench before the video started. But I'm not going to turn it off now. So we've got a piece of 40 millimeter masking tape. We're going to put that down on our cutting mat there. Take a knife and cut it off. Okay, put that away. And then we can come along with a circle cutter. This is just a really cheap, nasty plastic circle cutter. And we can see that we've got this bottom edge here and the top edge there. So the middle is going to be there. And then coming from the sides, we've got um, we've got basically the, roughly the center is going to be about there. So I've got this set at about 28 millimeters. So I'm going to make like that and I'm going to make a circle. So Cut this circle out of here. Okay, just like so. And you'll hear when it's gone through because you'll stop hearing that paper cutting sort of sound. And then that can be placed. I've actually fitted the guns now, so it makes it a bit more difficult. But that can be placed over the turret. 28 millimeters is the size I used. Okay, and that can be placed over the turret over the green paint just like so and then you can spray your silver so uh, that's how I went about that so yes I haven't shown you me doing it but I've shown you how I've done it so now you know how you can go and do it should you want to but um, if you are a stickler for accuracy then basically a 1943 Lancaster as used in the Dam Busters raid, would have had its nose turret like this. It would have had the interior of the nose like this. All this framing would have been like this. And uh, there you go. So um, basically, we're going to get this together now. Once we've got those, uh, those bits and pieces in, we're going to get that together. And then that glazing is going to go on there. Join up with that piece at the back and then we'll mask up and we're going to spray this top brown because when 
this is actually going to go on there like that and the brown continues on an early Lancaster the brown camouflage continues over same front and back later Lancasters it's just all black but early Lancasters they continued that brown over the top so basically a line from here goes straight around into the other side and that will all be brown okay so there we go it's looking good isn't it doesn't that look bloody lovely compared to just having it all black I think it looks amazing anyway right see you in a second okay, so I've got those um, ammo belt pieces in they will be painted in black so they're looking good now we can fit this uh, which one is this one here we can fit this piece onto the back now what I'm going to do here is apply the glue after I fitted it because I want to make sure it aligns perfectly with the uh, with the clear part so I'm not going to use super glue on the clear part I'm going to use the Migamo ultra glue but when this all goes together as you can see we need to make sure we've got a nice blended fit between the two now I've got to make sure that front piece we've got three tabs on the actual turret base there we go we get those to line up and then get all this to line up here so once that's all lined up I'm going to grab a piece of masking tape excuse me I just burped then sorry about that um, I'm going to clamp oh, not clamp I'm going to take this together and then I am going to get my VMS black super glue and I'm going to put that all around those joints just burped again then sorry and uh, hopefully that will hold that back piece in like so. Now what I don't want to do is go using super glue in its you know abundancy around the uh, clear part because what will happen is it will fog the clear part especially in areas like this where it's enclosed. So um, we need to be very very careful not to go flooding this area with super glue we just need to make sure we've got enough in there to capillary in we can always sand this afterwards I want to make sure this back end is held nice and solid because we're going to rely on this to support the uh, the glazing when we glue that in all right so uh, there we are looking nice isn't it right so I'm going to leave that to dry and then we can sand that back give it another coat of paint if we have to and um, it'll be job done but you can see the inside it's all nice and bright with the green and then silver in there and everything looking lovely right see you in a minute 24 hours for me a couple of seconds for you just like that Okay, so I've uh, moved on a bit now from last night. I've done a bit of work. I've done the, the top on the black and you can also see that I've got the canopy frame off. So I'm going to show you how I've done that in case you want to do the same. If you've already built your um, canopy, your turret frame, if you've already done it and you want to get it off, I'll show you how to do it or how I've done it. I never show you how to do things, I'll show you how I've done it. Um, there we go right so we can get that front in I think that's the way it goes in that front first come on line up this will be the third time I've done this I want to show you how I got it apart we go. that's how it goes together it's actually quite easy compared to the actual cockpit canopy it's very easy so if you want to get yours apart without scratching it or anything first thing to do is push down on the glazing here and lift up on that frame and pull it upwards not you're not butchering it you're doing it gently and all you want to do is just get that corner there to pop out you see just like that you can see here we have the, the glazing there is raised so you can see that lower glazed panel has popped out of the frame and if we get a cocktail stick in there I'll just hold it away Okay, and then come along to the next one at the front 
put your cocktail stick in there and you'll get that next corner to pop out. There you, go. you can see it's starting to come away. You can see this corner here is popped out. So we'll do the same on this side. I'm going to leave in that cocktail stick on the other side for now so that it doesn't pop back in. Okay, so get that cocktail stick in behind there. I've picked up about the widest, biggest cocktail stick I could find, I think. So we get that in there. Okay, and then when you can see it's come away from that top corner there. It's come away from there. Then we'll get into the bottom of it. Here, and push that up. And then we can get that whole bottom out. Now once we've got both those bottom corners out like that, Take our cocktail stick out. Okay, I've just popped that one back in. Well done, Nigel. Just pop that back out. This plastic is quite flexible, so um, I think the risk of breaking it is quite low. So there we go. And then what I've done is got a cocktail stick at the top there, in here, to wedge it down. I've managed to pop that side back in as well. So what we'll do is pop that one back out again. I think this went quicker the first time when I did it off camera, but as you all know, when the camera's on, everything that can go wrong will go wrong. There we go. So that's out like that. Okay, and then I can pop a cocktail stick into there, just like so. Okay, and then what will happen, you just give it a little bit of pressure from the top and it will just fall out, just like so. So that's how you get it apart. Okay, so what I've done, I've got this one apart, um, painted it brown. I've had to mix some brown paint to match the brown on the um, on the model itself. It's I've, I tried Tamiya Flat Earth and it's not the same colour. I've tried the AK Real Colour, it's not the same. Um, I've tried my own mix and it's not the same. So this is this brown here is all on its own. The only one I didn't try was the Outlaw. I've got the Outlaw brown. Maybe I should try that one. Um, but I'm going to have to mix it again because I only mixed a small amount in the airbrush. Because when we glue this onto here, so when we glue that onto there, then we're going to have to do this seam and paint it again anyway. So that's I'm not too worried about it. I'll show you how I mixed it when we get there. Um, and also... To find the place where the brown is, uh, what I've done is just fitted the, the nose turret onto that pin there. And then I've used the blue tack sausage to get a soft masking line. In fact, that could do with going over again with the black. Um, we can do that. And then just to get a soft, you can see we've got a soft line there. Okay. I mean, it nearly matches, but what we could always do is blend some brown. We'll mix some brown paint and we can blend it onto there and get it all looking good. I need to do that black again as well because that angle doesn't look good on there. It should be straight, but we can do that with a bit of black. Okay, so what we're going to have to do now, what I thought after is what I maybe should have done was glued this back piece onto here first, and then we could have dropped that down on there. But I don't think you can drop that down. I think it has to go in from behind. But you can see here where we've, we filled those gaps, if you remember, I sanded them down. Just made a little bit of black paint on just to have a look at the seams and they all look good. They're not that important because if you never turn the turret, you're not going to see them. But I just want to show you guys how to get it, uh, how to get it as good as we can. So I'm going to refit this this glazing. This is what I do. I go around with a black marker and paint, paint in all the frame, and then a cotton bud with a little drop of IPA on it. Got to take Jess for a walk, and it looks like it's going to rain. Just a little tiny drop of IPA. Put the lid back on so if you do knock it over it doesn't spill and then we can do is just go around the edges of the clear parts and just remove any that's got onto the surface of the clear okay just like so and this takes away that horrible chrome shiny edge You've seen me do this before on other builds and on this build. You've seen me do it on the main canopy. Well, you did on the first video and then I deleted it. 
I didn't want to have two lots of the same build. So what, what I did on here, I, I did my own build that I bought. And then I redid the videos as Hatchet sent them to me. And then removed the old video. So there's only, there's only one of each. So you won't get confused. Right. So there we go. And I will leave all those standard ones up. And these videos will have a different title series and be in a different playlist. Okay, so I'll do all the other videos as per standard at the pack and then do go back and do a revisited one, which is what I'm doing here. Okay, and obviously in these we're only going to cover any changes I make. I'm not going to make a video just for the sake of making a video when I've done all the same things. And then we can just get another cotton bud and just wipe it over just to make sure there's no residual IPA anywhere. Okay, and then wrong one. And then we can fit this onto here. Watch me break this frame now after I've painted it up all nicely. There we go. So that's going to go in there. Click, click, click. You'll hear it. Click, click, click. Goes in easy. There we are. And you can see now we've got that lovely black line around the clear instead of having a, uh, a shiny glistening edge. You can see the black edge around the around the brown as well, which looks a bit better than just having the clear. We've also got the black frame on the inside. So there we go. There's a bit of excess on there. We'll just wipe that off. I've got a feeling those two bits should be painted black anyway. I'll have a look at that. And then we can make sure the inside is clean. So we're going to clean the inside out. Make sure there's no dust in there. This sanding, by the way, any sanding you do around here, I would do it before you actually fit the, um, before you glue the glazing on, because that way any dust you, you get inside can be easily removed. So you can slide the gun through there, slide that back there, and you can see that fits on there beautifully. And now you can see with all these different colours now, rather than just black and clear, you can see how this is all starting to look lovely. And then when we put it on the nose, like so, you can see it's a really interesting feature of the model rather than just all being black. Now then, I don't want to use super glue to glue this because I fear that the vapors will get inside and fog up the clear. So we're going to use MIG Ammo Ultra Glue, which is brilliant stuff, but it does take a while to dry. So I've got, I've got a little bit of masking tape here. Um, I think what I'll do is just remove the clear part. I've glued these ammo bins on the bottom as well. I don't think you saw me do that. So we just get some of this on a cocktail stick. I'm just going to run that round there. Okay, just like so. We should get a nice seam then. Not that it's that important because I think the, the way the model is designed, I think this seam is hidden. I should have checked before I took the other one apart. I've got enough here to build another one up to steps up to and including step seven. So there we go. And then I think what I'll do is once the glazing's on, I think I'll go around the bottom and put some glue in and let it capillary in. So make sure we've got no glue on our fingers. Make sure the guns go through the holes. Make sure those tabs fit and then give that a good old push down at the back. Okay, and then we can grab a couple of little bits of tape. Oops. Just tape that on there like that. Oh, here comes the ice cream van. I think our ice cream van, the person, thinks everybody here is deaf because he plays his bells at about 900 million decibels. We can see how lovely that's all fitted on there. So that will all dry now at the back and that'll be nice and solid when it dries. Because we've got the glue in there, we formed a seal. So we should be able to get away with getting some super glue in there to, to fill that seam. And then what we can do now is take our 
cocktail stick and just put a nice big dollop of glue on there a nice big dollop of glue on there and a nice big dollop there and then that will capilli around those three pins we can also get some in there as well this stuff dries clear so don't worry about it getting into your turret or anything there we are we can fill those gaps all the way around the bottom if we want to no real need You can see that glue is capillaring into the joint, so that's good. Let me just put some more around the front just to add a little rigidity to that area. Okay. And then get a cotton bud, just dampen it. And wipe away the excess like so you can see it's left the glue you gave it time to capillary into the joint so the glue's gone into the joint but it's come away from the outside there's nothing oozing around here I think what I might do is get a bit of tape well, I don't want to read the tape because I've already painted this about 20 minutes ago so the paint might come off not that it matters we've got to paint it again but then we'll get an edge we've got to sand down to feather it so uh, there we go Right, so that's all gone together lovely so we'll let that dry and then we should be able to get something in there to fill that i may not use super glue i may use something else and it doesn't matter if we've got a bit of a line there like i say i think the model is designed in such a way that when you put it yeah it hides that seam anyway like when it goes together so it's actually not that important if you're not going to be turning your turret you're never going to see it but uh we're going to do this properly so you can if you want to but you don't need to there's a lot of stuff i do that you don't need to do but you might want to just because you can right wait for that to dry take jess for a walk and i'll be back right so um a couple of hours later now that glue all dried i've put some super glue in there and sanded it back to try and get rid of this seam there's a little bit of a seam remaining because a bit of a shrinkage or whatever. I'm not going to worry about it too much because, as I said, it's going to be hidden. So now what we have to do is look at masking the windows. Now, there's many different ways you can do this. You could uh, put the tape on the model, on, on the clear part, go around. Um, in fact, I'll show you. What you could do is take a bit of tape, put it on the clear part like so, and then using a cocktail stick or something, just go around the edge. Okay, and, and sort of try and damage the paper on the edge if you like. All right, and then when you take it off, you can see where the cocktail stick has been, and then you can put it on a cutting mat and then just go around, follow the lines, cut it out. As I'm just doing it roughly here, I'm just doing it quick. Just cut it out, following those lines, remove the excess tape. Get your mask out and fit it on there like so. And as you can see, I'm going to cut this really roughly and I'm rushing and everything. But you get the idea. So that's one way of doing it. Another way to do it is to use liquid mask. You can get various liquid masks that you could use. The only worry with doing that here is that um, if we get it go down underneath you may not be able to get it out and it may be unsightly in there so I don't want to do that on this one um, the other way to do it of course is what you can do is get your tape like so you can put that over the window you're going to do take a cocktail stick go around the edge so you've got the edge clearly marked out where you're going to cut and then with a nice fresh blade just come around in that gap because on these windows we've got massive gaps between the the glazing and the frame which makes it really easy to do this 
on some older kits where you've only got a very very faint line it's very difficult to do this so there we go and always cut both ways into the corners that's my recommendation just to make sure the tape is free in both ways so like that like that and then you can peel the paper away okay and then with a the cotton bud just make sure the tape's going you can see there that's masked just like that I hope I haven't just done everything off camera um, I better go and check hadn't I right so we're all masked up now as you can see we've got all the windows masked up don't need to mask these in here because we're not painting the, the front bottom right? we've already done what we'll do now is paint the black which I'm going to use Tamiya's LP65 which is rubber black and it's a great match for the colour that Hachette have used so we're going to spray that sort of around here and sort of halfway up you know and then um, let that dry and then we can mask, mask up with a uh, a blue tack sausage which I'll show you in a minute and um, and we can get that done I filled in those holes there with blue tack to stop paint going inside and also that hole in the top um, so what we'll do first of all we will hold it sort of maybe on its guns and just spray around there and, uh, and let that dry so I'll see you back in a second as I say this is Tabia LP 65 thin roughly 50 50 with Mr Colour leveling thinner and that's my favorite paint and uh, thinner combination at the moment so uh, I'll see you back in a sec okay so that's done um, so we've got all the, the black around there, the rubber black. So now all I need to do is pick out this piece of blue tack I put in here. Okay, we'll have to put it back in in a minute. But, um, just going to get that out of there so I can fit the nose. Because now I need to know what height the brown needs to be at. There we go. So that's how that's going to fit in there. And you can see on here it's not a very hard line. It's a softish line. So what I'm going to do here is get the blue tack or white tack. White tack leaves less grease behind. And then what we can do is stick that on there. Okay, get the um, let's get the turret turned straight. And what we can do is turn that, put that on there so that the edge of the white tack is level with the edge where the because that's how it was done. It was painted on. Yeah, I like that. They stopped doing this, um, I think it was about mid-43, they stopped painting the tops of the turrets. So let's just turn that back round again. Get it in the straight ahead position roughly and then we could just put this white tack on here and get it at the same height roughly as the as the brown paint is on the on the actual existing nose of the model. So what we can do now is time coming away but it doesn't want to stick to that masking tape. So what we can do now is it would rather stick to my finger than the model look which is always the same. It's because camera honestness that's what that's what that's called. Okay so hold that there, hold that there, get the nose out of the way. Then we can squeeze that round there. Squeeze that round there. Look at that. It's not quite long enough. We'll make it long enough. There we are. There we have a ring around the, like a halo on the top of our turret. Just like so. And that will give us, make sure that's straight this time. I had an angle before, didn't I? Alright, and I'm just going to pull those two together. And then I can manipulate the join to get rid of it. Just like so. Obviously, as I say, on the back of the turret, it's not that important. And we may be able to just have a quick look and see if we're about right on the height. I don't think we're not a million miles out, whatever happens. It's better to be too low than too high because it's easier to come in and touch in the black than it is the um, the brown because obviously the brown is a special mix which we're going to do in a minute. 
So there we are, that's that done. Of course, the other way you could do it is just mark it with a with a black marker without and then put the mask the uh, the sausage on after. But doing it that way, when we spray the brain, we'll, we, we spray perpendicular to the to there, we'll get a nice soft edge rather than the hard edge. You can see it's not a very it's not a really hard edge on there, it's fairly soft. So we want to match that. Put this piece of blue tack in the top again to fill that hole in. So we don't get brown paint all floating around inside and making a mess on the inside of the uh, turret. Okay, there we go. So that's gone in there. So now we're ready to do the brown. Now the problem is with the brown is getting it mixed. So I am going to get my airbrush over here and I'm going to mix some paint. Now what I'm going to use here this is the best way I've found, this Tamiya XF52 Flat Earth. And then I've got my green here, and maybe we'll use a touch of white as well. So what I'm going to do is get some XF52 into the airbrush. Get all this out of the way because we don't want to get paint on it. So we'll get a drop of XF52, the tiniest amount of paint we need. So what I'm going to do is... Why is this camera so far forward? It needs to come back. There we go. There we are. Right. Get a drop of paint into there. We don't need very much. Just like so. Just give the brush a wipe off on a cloth. Right, and then we're going to put the lid back on. And as you can see, this colour is not that close. It's um, it's not that close at all. But I would recommend when you want to do it, let it dry. Let the paint dry. Don't ever try and do it with... with don't look at the bottom of the pot and say, oh, that's a good match, because it doesn't dry that colour, I can assure you. Right, so I'm going to add a tiny bit of drop of thinners now, because I want it to spray a bit better. So get a drop of thinners in here. Just a couple of drops, nothing too much. All right, and then I'm going to add a drop of this interior green that I made because I found this is a bit, it's a bit too brown. It needs to be knocked back a bit. So I'm just going to get a drop of this interior green that I mixed up. Get that in there, and that tends to pull it back a bit. Just dry the brush off. Another drop of interior green in there. And then we'll see how that looks. What we need to do is spray something that's already brown and then see if we can match it up. So I'm going to put a finger on here over the end of the airbrush, give it a little twizzle, mix the paint up. So what I can do is spray this on here. And then just blow it to let it dry back and see what the match is like. And it looks close-ish. So let's get some on here and see how it looks. So I'm going to stay at 90 degrees to the white tack. I should have masked underneath the white tack. I'm going to get some brown underneath it. Let me get some tape under there, otherwise I'm going to ruin my... Uh, work I've previously done. Hang on a second. Right. So I'll just get some on here now. As I say, I'm staying 90 degrees. Do the whole thing. As you can see, we used an absolute tiny amount of paint. Now we're going to cut to air. Just dry that off see how it matches with that. Now I don't know what it looks like on camera but in reality it's not bad but it's a bit it's still a bit too brown so I'm going to add a drop more interior green. I'm going to keep the camera going for this so that if you guys want to do this you can see how I'm doing it. You could just use um, XF71 instead of the interior green mix that I made. Give that a little mix, like that. 
that may be a little over the top. I may need to put a drop more brown in there. So again, we'll see how that looks. You can instantly see it's a lighter brown. Again, we have to let it dry. Don't just be guided by the colour that's in the pot or on the brush or whatever. You need to paint it on what you're painting and, and dry it because it will change colour. Tamiya paints generally, I'm not going to say always, but 90% of the time they change colour as they dry. A bit more down in there. So let's see how that looks. Well, I think that's pretty much there so what we can do now just to take away the uh any differences what we can do is just very very lightly and i mean very very lightly just spray some of that color onto the front of there not the back because the back's got to match the brown and that will blend it in they do this on cars you go like halfway down the door or something and as you can see we've got a fairly good match um, yeah I can always darken it up with a bit of oil or wash or something but it looks pretty good it looks pretty good I'm gonna let that dry for a little while longer carry on doing the same and then uh, I'll come back and show you how it looks when it's dry there we go all done. I've given it a coat of flat varnish as well to um, just to seal it in. You can see it's not exactly the same colour, but I think it's close enough. It's close enough. Um, I mean, the thing is, if when we build the model, if we find that all the panels are sort of very in shades, I've already noticed there's a there's a variation here. You see, when where this panel here goes down into there, you can see there's a variation in the shade there. So um, we're going to be doing some repainting on the whole thing anyway, I think. But uh, we shall see. Um, but, uh, there we are. So what I might end up doing is making a mix of a, a dark earth colour. Um, you know, slightly darken this. This is a bit too browny, isn't it? And just paint or even just use an off the shelf REF dark earth. Say the, you know, the, the, um, the outdoor paint or the, or the AK or whatever, or my own mix. And just do all of the dark earth here and on the nose um, and then it probably won't notice against the rest of it you know because you've got you'll have this slightly different shade and then the next bit of dark earth is sort of you know back here somewhere coming across the wing so um probably uh may well do that actually just do the front half and because i'm not really over the moon with that color difference there it's 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 really weird in different lights it looks different i'll have to go look in the daylight i guess right I'll be back in like that for you tomorrow for me. Alrighty, next day now. And as you can see, we have a lovely match on the paint. What I ended up doing was just going and making, adding a little bit more green and stuff and making, messing around and getting a colour that very, very closely matched. And then what I've done, I've painted this, okay, with that colour. Then I've thinned the paint with an engine of its life and then just basically painted this and you can't see it but basically the front is changing color as it goes back maybe you can see it maybe the light is showing it up in, in the daylight you can't see it and i've also done it onto the um onto the windscreen as well so so basically you now this brown is slightly different very slightly different than the rest of the aircraft now as i've already shown you we've got this issue here where we've got the the different between the blacks here so something's gonna to have to be done there I think this is the only panel that's sort of matte so what we'll probably do is paint that the same as this one to give it perhaps give it a bit of a sheen um, black's really difficult because as soon as you put like a clear coat on that it's going to completely change its color so uh, it, it can be quite difficult but um I just want to get, I've got some liquid mask on there, just get that off. Um, so yeah, um, so all in all, coming along nicely. So the next thing we have to do is look at what's next in the instructions. So we've built the turret, 
we've done all of that. Now here, it's asking us to come along and fit the turret to the base, all right, which I'll do for now, just to get it out of the way. In fact, what we will do is get this masking tape off of here. Where's the end? I can't find the end. Come on, come off. There we are. Get that hook over those wires. There we go. Get that off of there. Right. That can go in the bin. And then what they're asking us to do is fit this onto here and fit this rear panel. It says you do not need to use any glue. I would seriously recommend not gluing it because when it goes into here, it's going to have to be adjusted to fit. So this piece here is going to go into those four holes there like that. So you've got four pins, four holes. And as you can see, I've painted this green because this is on the inside. You're not going to be able to see it, the inside, but I painted it green anyway. And that's just going to slot in there like that. So there is our finished turret. Um, we're going to get this masking tape off. And then I'm going to show you how it looks. You don't need to sit here and watch me uh, unmask it all, do you? And there we go. Um, I hope we can all agree that that looks a lot different than that. So there's the out of the box, all black version for your post, post late 43 bomber. And there's your early silver, aluminium, green and brown topped. So there we go. And you can see straight away there, the difference. So there we are, if you're a stickler for accuracy, then follow along and do these little changes with me. If you're not worried about it, then don't bother. You don't have to, because the model's perfectly nice uh, with, with none of these mods done. I mean, everybody, every man and his dog gets it wrong with the uh, nose colour being black and the, and the turret being black and everything. And people always forget to paint the top brown. But if you want an accurate model and you just want to have some fun and, you know, extend the time you spend with your part work and make it sort of more enjoyable because you're spending longer with it, then this is the way to go. So there we are. So that's going to be it for part two. In part three, I've forgotten what part three was all about. Part three was looking at the windscreen. Uh, we've already painted this internal framing, so we can add these panels, perhaps add some decals, paint some details, whatever. Um, so we can do that. We're not going to add that antenna, as I said to you before. Um, we can attach the, the nose to the windscreen, because we haven't done that yet. All of this is done. I've got the windscreen over there, and I've already done the framing black, like I've done on this one. And uh, so you can see that. And that's going to be pack three. And then pack four is, here we go. This is where we're going to be with all this. So we're going to get lots and lots of painting done. We'll paint this um, black on the top, we'll paint the, green, the correct green around the sides. We'll paint these panels, fit all those uh, bits and pieces, paint the floor. Um, we've already done this. We've already fitted those on there. You can see they're already in. And then we'll paint this all the correct green. Um, and that is that. So the next part of the video, part three, is going to be dealing with packs three and four, I believe. So I will see you all for that. Thank you for watching. Um, as I said earlier, if you haven't already, please don't forget to hit that subscribe. Hit the thumbs up if you've liked it. Hit the thumbs down if you haven't. And um, if you want to get notified of when I put new videos out, hit the notifications bell. And uh, YouTube will notify you accordingly. So thank you for watching. Bye.